Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're looking at this. It's the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Standard Edition guitar. Now, Yamaha have revamped and redone the Revstar range completely for this year, and there are now three tiers to the range. So starting at the bottom, the most affordable, you have the Element series, and I have done another video already on the Revstar Element Edition, which you can watch after this. In the middle, you have the Standard Edition, and the Element and the Standard are both built in Indonesia. Moving up to the top of the range and a lot more money, you have the Japanese built professional rev stars. So what we're going to do today then is really go over the standard in as many different ways as we can and we'll really get to grips with what the rev star is all about because I think that a lot of players don't really know what the rev star is. I mean we often think of it as being similar to a Les Paul, it looks a little bit like an SG but it can be a bit telly-ish, a bit stratish but actually the rev star is its own thing and that's what we're going to try and look at a bit more in detail in this video. So I'll start by telling you the specifications and the features of the guitar then we'll play it in a bunch of different styles to see how it sounds and afterwards I will give you a bit more of my opinions on what it feels like to play, how it's been to have it at home for the past few weeks and whether or not I think the Revstar standard is worth your money. Now because I have also already done a video with the Element before what I'm going to do is not do a full-on comparison here, we'll save that for a separate video I think, but I will just go back occasionally and compare the experience I've had with the standard Revstar compared to that of the Element model because there are a few differences and there is of course a difference in price. Now in terms of price then, the standard Revstar at time of filming in May 2022 is around $750, around 750 to 800 euros or about 650 pounds depending on where you're based. Now again for an Indonesian guitar that's pretty decent, pretty middle of the road in terms of value but the specifications and the features on this guitar are very strong indeed so let's speak about those now and we'll start with the finish. This one is in Sunset Burst, it's quite hard to show it in the lights without getting lots of reflections but it's a beautiful colour. There are actually five other finishes available for the Revstar standard though. You've got Swift Blue which is my personal favourite, you've got Vintage White, you've got Hot Merlot which is a kind of deep dark rich burgundy colour, you've got Flash Green and then you've got Plain Old Black or black as they're calling it, it's not called plain old black. I don't know why they couldn't come up with an adjective to describe the black a little bit more, but there you go, something to think of next time perhaps, Yamaha. So anyway, underneath the finishes you've got a mahogany body and the body is chambered. It's a really interesting technique that they've gone for here and it looks quite strange when you see the naked body with no paint or no top or anything like that. There's plenty of pictures on the Yamaha website to see the chambering process and there's more information about it there. It aids with the balance and it aids with the resonance and the tone of the guitar etc. I'll also try Try and put in a couple of pictures for you here as well. So you've got the chambered mahogany body, you've got a maple top on this edition as well and it's quite a simple paired back look on the front of the guitar but there are actually some hidden tonal secrets here. So we've got a pair of Yamaha VH5 humbuckers here but you don't just have a three-way switch, you actually have a five-way in this guitar. So you've got five different tonal options as you might expect with a guitar like a Strat or a three pickup guitar. So you've got your standard neck pickup, your standard bridge pickup and your standard middle both pickups on at the same time, but you've also got those classic sort of stratty in between, sort of quacky sort of tones, which we'll really get into and listen to a bit in the playing part of the video. That's not all though, we've got a volume control here and a tone control here, but the tone control is actually a push-pull. Pull it up and that engages what Yamaha call the focus switch. Now the focus switch is actually a passive boost and what that does is give you a bit of a subtle boost, a bit more aggression to your tone. It also shaves off some of the high end and gives you a bit of a boost in the mid and low frequencies. So it's it's going to be really interesting for me to hear how that works in practice and I should say that if you're interested in the technology behind this, the story behind why Yamaha put this focus switch in and what exactly is behind it, go and take a look at the video that I'm linking for you now by Phil McKnight where he really goes inside the guitar and digests and really explains the technology behind it because it's really quite interesting. So that's the front of the guitar, looking at the back we have the double cutaway there and a nice tummy cut here so it's nice and comfortable to play, pretty decent upper fret access thanks to the double cutaway too and moving up to the neck. So we have a beautiful dark rosewood fingerboard here. The neck itself is actually a satin finish whereas the body is high gloss. We've got a 12 inch fingerboard radius here, 22 jumbo stainless steel frets and I would say that the neck itself is kind of medium to chunky and it's a C profile. It's very comfortable and it's a 24.75 inch scale length. Now one other thing about the neck is that for the standard and the professional series of the Revstar guitars you have carbon 
reinforcement in the neck, and that actually helps make the neck a bit stiffer, and Yamaha say it aids in tonal transfer, so it's actually helping you sound better. Moving up to the headstock then, we have this pretty cool Yamaha Revstar headstock, and Yamaha's own tuners on the back there. So this is the Yamaha Revstar standard, the 2022 model, and what we're going to do now is play it. So I'm going to put the guitar through as many different musical genres as I can, as I often do on the Rich Words music channel, and we'll see how it performs. Now, my rig for today is going to be my Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200 head. We'll start on the Amps Clean channel and do some gentle stuff with the humbuckers. We'll play some folk and some pop, maybe a little bit of indie. Then I shall kick on my Gria Lightspeed Organic Overdrive. We'll do a bit of classic rock and a bit of indie rock too. Then we'll switch on the Amps Lead channel and do some heavier overdrive stuff, some hard rock, some punk rock, some alternative rock, and so on. And finally, we'll go back to the Amps Clean channel. I'll switch on my Rev G3 Distortion pedal. We'll tune the Rev Star down to drop D and see if it can do a bit of proper chugging. Enough talk then, this is the 2022 Yamaha Revstar standard model. Let's play it now and we'll speak in more detail about it afterwards.
Okay then, so that was the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Standard, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. And I do have to say that with these two Yamaha VH5 humbuckers, the 5-way selector switch and the focus switch too, there certainly were a lot of tones to get through in this video. So without further ado then, I'm going to tell you in a bit more detail what I think about the Revstar Standard. So my first impressions on the guitar were quite interesting, because when Yamaha sent the box to me, I thought, oh this is pretty big and fat. Why is it much fatter than the Element box, which I'd received a couple of months prior to that? And that's actually because the standard Revstars come with a gig bag, and it's a pretty nice, chunky, well-fitting gig bag too. I'd say it's got a good couple of centimetres worth of padding, it's got some really nice, thick and comfy rucksack-style straps too, so you can wear it, you can have it on your back, you can carry it like a normal gig bag. It's a really decent, high-quality feeling addition to the Revstar standard package, in my opinion. Now then, once I got the guitar out of that really nice gig bag, I was really kind of taken in by this beautiful sunset burst finish. It looks really, really nice. It's the only one of the Revstar standards that doesn't have a racing stripe. And I love blue guitars. If you watch my channel, you'll know that. And I really want to have the Swift Blue one at some point. That has a white or a cream racing stripe, but I really do like this sunset burst finish. So that was nice too. Straight away I was also taken in by the beautiful rosewood fingerboard and these kind of oval inlays that it has. They're sort of rounded off rectangular ones anyway. And I noticed straight away that the jumbo stainless steel frets had been done really well. They've been rounded beautifully. The fret work is exemplary on this guitar. Absolutely full marks for that. That's something I noticed straight away. So I was really looking to picking this thing up, plugging it in, and hearing how it sounds. And one little thing I also noticed was the fact that it's not the lightest guitar in the world. It's a pretty decent weight, I would say. Because the mahogany body was chambered, I had perhaps expected it to be a tiny bit lighter than it is, but this specific model comes in at 3.6 kilograms, which is £7.15. And that's pretty much exactly the same as the Yamaha Revstar Element model that I reviewed a couple of months ago, so perhaps they're trying to build them to around the £8 mark, or something like that. So those were my first impressions of the guitar. Then I plugged it in and started to notice a bit more about the playability, and a bit more about the build quality of the guitar. Now, in terms of the build, quality pretty much flawless. There's nothing that I can find in any way, shape or form that leads me to believe this guitar has not been through a great QC and build process. The finish has been applied perfectly, the gloss finish on the body, the satin finish on the neck is really, really good. Like I've just said, the frets are perfect, the setup was great, straight from the factory, nice medium low action, intonation perfect, strings decent, the nuts being cut well, the Yamaha tuners do their job. Perfect marks in terms of the build quality then. And in terms of the playability too, this guitar is just a joy to play. It's really easy, it's really well balanced. The satin smooth neck, really, really easy and nice to get up and down. I felt at home on this guitar straight away, so no problems there. And then we come to the sounds department, and this is another highlight for me, because in my opinion, these Yamaha VH5 humbuckers sound fantastic. They're a beautiful sounding humbucker. They have really nice, elegant tonalities to them. They're super clear and they have a biting clarity for everything. From really pristine cleans through to the down tuned metal stuff that I did and I hope that you would agree with me too having heard what I've just played leave me a comment and tell me what you think about the sounds down there but for me personally yeah I really like these humbuckers and just one comparison here between the standard and the Revstar Element that I've previously reviewed the Element has Yamaha's VH3 humbuckers in there which are fantastic and I really like them but I do think that you get a few more percentage points worth of finer tonality from the VH5s in the standards so that's definitely something that you're spending more money on to get better tones. Now when it came to the clean stuff I was really enjoying it, like I said, beautiful classic cleans, really nice top end, really nice pushed mids, lovely classic humbucker tones, and really warm jazzy sounds too. And that was exacerbated by turning on the focus switch, which I haven't really fully understood, I don't think, at this point, and it's going to take me a little bit longer to really work out how to get the best out of the focus switch. For me on the clean channel, the focus switch, it really kind of warmed things up, and it would be perfect for someone playing jazz, but for someone like me who really likes the sparkly top end, that's really not what the focus switch is about, so it didn't work for me on the clean channels. When we went up to the crunch stuff and did the classic rock and the indie, that's where 
I thought these humbuckers really bloomed a bit more as well. You get that beautiful thick push. It sounds almost as fat as a Les Paul, but it has its own identity as well. The Revstar really is its own thing. I really love the tones that I get for this for the indie stuff and the classic rock stuff, which is what I spend a lot of my time playing at home anyway. So all good there. And when we had the focus switch on for those kinds of sounds, it was giving me something like just a bit of a sort of subtle boost. It worked in some contexts and not so much in others. Listen to the sounds and tell me what you think about the focus switch there. When we went up to the high gain overdrive stuff, I thought we were in super fat territory. I thought this guitar handled it really well. And when I went down to drop D and got the Rev G3 distortion pedal out, I thought that these humbuckers sounded fantastic. They're super clear. They're super easy to hear string separation. When you play a power chord and you're playing every one of the six strings, you hear it, even when you've got a bunch of saturation going on. So really, really full marks for these pickups. Again, I tried the focus switch on the super heavy settings and it sort of made me feel like I wasn't getting quite as much clarity. So I really like the idea of the focus switch and it really gave me a boost that I liked in some settings, but it's going to take me a while to really learn how to maximize the capabilities of it. Now, I would say that if you're looking for ways to kind of really hear someone getting the most out of the focus switch, go and watch a video by Jay Leonard J, or actually go to the Anderton's channel and watch the overview that Lee did with a chap called Ross who works for Yamaha. Ross gets some really nice jazzy clean tones and also some interesting sort of cocked wah sounds out of the Revstar standard with a bit of distortion. So go and check those videos out later. I will link those for you if you're interested in watching those. And I guess the final thing about the sounds is that we have a five-way switch here. For me personally, I found myself most of the time alternating between the classic three-way switch that you'd have with two humbuckers. So it was either bridge humbucker, neck humbucker, or the middle setting. And that's where I was most of the time. I did go into the in-between positions for some quackier stuff on occasion, and I think it sounds pretty good. If you're expecting Stratocaster style in-between quacky tones, you need to get a Strat for that. But this option is something that really gives you something a bit different for different tonalities. Combine that with the focus switch, and you've really got so many options. Just one other little comparison with the Element here. The Element model has a dry switch, which is a bit more like a coil split. It's actually a high pass filter. And I'm not sure, but just at this stage, I possibly prefer the dry switch to the focus switch. Change my mind in the comments if you can. So if you've been watching this video and you're liking what you're seeing and hearing, but you're interested in maybe seeing what else is out there, well, there is a bunch of stuff that you could say is competition to the Revstar standard. The first place I think you should look is with the other Revstars as well, because you've got the more affordable element model and you've got the higher priced Japanese built professional model. Now those of course come at different price points, they have slightly different specifications, so check them out on the Yamaha website or watch my video of the element model. There is also a P90 equipped version of the Revstar in the standard and professional series and those are also going to be definitely worth a look and I would love to try those out. So Yamaha, if you're watching this, let's get that sorted at some point. Otherwise I would probably look at PRS SE guitars as the next competitor here. They're not your standard Les Paul or Tele or Strat, so there's something a little bit different. Loads of different body shape options, lots of different pickup options, and all of the experiences that I've had with PRS SE guitars have been that they're made to excellent quality levels and they come at a pretty decent price point. Some of them might be a little bit more expensive than the Revstar standard, but go and check them out and see how you feel about those. If you did want something by Gibson or Fender, I would say that in terms of budget, you'd be looking at something like the Fender Player Plus guitars, maybe the Gibson Tribute Les Pauls or SGs, or maybe even some of the higher end modern Epiphone stuff. Those are very versatile guitars built to very decent quality specs and so on. So check them out and see if they compete with the Revstar for you. There are a few other brands that you could go into as well. Something like Reverend would be kind of a nice out-of-the-box way to look at it. And there's other weird ones like Dan Electro, maybe even something by Gretsch. Plenty of different options out there if you want to go off the beaten track a bit and have something which isn't just a Les Paul or a Stratocaster. Go down to your local dealer, see what there is, try them against the Revstar, and see what you think. But my personal opinion would have to be that for around $800 or €750, Euros, it's going to be pretty hard for something else to beat off the quality and the playability, the feel, the tones, and the experiences that I've had with the Revstar standard. And so overall, I would say that that is a pretty decent conclusion to this video. The Yamaha Revstar standard is a great guitar, and I really, really like it. In terms of feel, in terms of playability, in terms of quality, and in terms of the tones as well, it's really, really decent. It just sounds fantastic for pretty much everything I do. There are so many different tonal options on tap, some of which I am yet to discover and make the most of. It feels fantastic, 
those stainless steel frets are great. And I think that with this really comfy neck, with this bodywork, with the Yamaha hardware and so on, you're going to be really hard pushed to find something better for the price. So who is the Revstar standard for? Well, it's for someone who wants something a little bit off the beaten track or someone who is kind of bored by your standard Les Paul type thing. This is not a Les Paul, it's not a Strat, it's not a Tele, it is its own model of guitar. And I would treat it as such. And I would even say that if you've got a nice little collection of instruments going and you've got some of the standards and you're considering something a little bit off the beaten track to complete your collection, have a look at the Revstar because I think not enough people have done that. Not enough players know that these are really, really fantastic instruments. And just a final little word here on the comparison between the Revstar Element and this, the Revstar Standard. Now the Revstar Element is one of the finest guitars that I've played in the 500 euro, 500 dollar price point. It's absolutely fantastic and I love it and I would have no qualms playing it in any context. But when you pick up the Revstar Standard, straight away you feel that you're getting something just a little bit more exquisite. I'll leave it at that for now for this video and you'll have to watch the full comparison. But there we go, those are my thoughts very quickly on it. I really hope that this video has answered all of the questions that you may have about the Yamaha Revstar Standard. But if there's anything else that you'd like to know, drop me a comment and I shall answer it to the best of my ability down there. And hey, if you're still around, maybe consider giving this video a like or maybe even subscribe to the Rich Words Music channel. That would really make my day and really helps this channel grow a little bit, helps us grow the little Rich Words Music community that we're building here. Plenty more videos like this if you're interested and there's a couple more being recommended to you here right now. Or sub to my channel by clicking on the little Rich face up there in the corner. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.